Okay, so maybe it's not a massive problem, more so of a minor inconvenience, but honestly, would you have clicked this video if it said, and the Buffalo Bills have a minor inconvenience? Probably not. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, this is a banger, okay? So this clickbait, you're actually getting dividends off that sh Today, we're gonna be talking about whether or not that the absence, or what seems like to be an absence, of a CB2 is going to play an effect in the 2021 season and what the Buffalo Bills can do about it. All coming up on today's episode of The Dumb Mafia Report. Yo, ho, ho, Da Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Da Mafia Report. You read the title correctly today. I do believe that while it's not a massive problem, I do believe that this is something that's still kind of a question mark at this point. And that is a piece of our secondary being a CB2, the guy that lines opposite of Trey White. We're going to go on ahead. We're going to talk about the guys that are currently on our roster. And then we're also going to talk about some rumors of free agent cornerbacks that the Bills have been rumored to have reached out and gathered information on. Before I do that, I do wanna go on ahead and give out a couple of announcements. Number one, I am giving away either a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. I'm announcing the winner on July 2nd. In order to enter, all you need to do is you need to screenshot proof that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and then DM that screenshot to me on Instagram at RealDanMitchell and you might as well follow me on Instagram as well because that is the only place I am announcing the winner. Number two, I created a Discord channel or server. I'm such a boomer. A Discord server and it has been absolutely crazy. We have a bunch of Bills fans in there, Dolphins fans, people from all over the NFL. And it's also the place where you can actually call into my live streams as well. So you're going to want to go on ahead and join that. Links in the description. And then last but not least, everybody always asks me, Dan, how can I support your channel? Well, the best way to do it is simply by smashing the f out of that like button. But if you ever want to go that extra mile, the best way to do it is to go on ahead and become a Patreon member. That link is in the description as well. Without further ado, let's dive into this. And now, Dumb Mafia, before the draft, I kind of just want to go on ahead and step back and sort of think about what a lot of us were thinking that the Buffalo Bills' true needs were once free agency was over going into the draft. It was definitely split for the most part in pass rush or a defensive end, edge rusher, or a running back. Well, I say that because I was probably one of the only people on that side of the fence, but you're happy you got what you wanted. But there was one sleeper position as well that I think if it were to make sense, hindsight's 2020, I suppose, going for a true CB2 would actually be an idea to go ahead and build that depth because right now there's a lot of question marks with whether or not that Levi Wallace or whether or not that Dane Jackson will be able to go on ahead and fill in that role and truly, truly make a impact in 2021. So really going on ahead and just looking at our cornerbacks from last year, I mean, as far as Josh Norman is concerned, he's a free agent now. We didn't re-sign him. And looking back on his 2020 year, this clip right here is probably the perfect summary of how his time in Buffalo is spent. He had a couple of cool pass breakups. He was really good for the city of Buffalo as well as far as his charitable contributions, but that poor guy, that clip's gonna be completely circulating forever from now on. So now it really ends up coming down into Levi Wallace starting off with number one. Now, surprisingly, Levi Wallace statistically did a lot better than he did in 2019. In 2019, the guy was absolutely picked on by a lot of different quarterbacks and wide receivers were just burning him left and right. And what I'm doing now is showing Levi Wallace's stats right here. When it came down to it, he was targeted 71 times and he allowed 41 completions, essentially giving him a 57.7 opposing completion rate against him when targeted. At first, for the most part, that's actually pretty damn good, especially for an NFL cornerback going into it, which makes you even want to appreciate it a bit more. Here are Trey White's stats. And Trey was targeted 65 times and 37 completions were made on him with a 56.9% completion rate. So when you look at the two, there really wasn't a lot of key differences. The pendulum didn't lean in one direction as far as targets or same with completion percentage. Both of these statistically 
Both of these cornerbacks, Trey White and Levi Wallace, were pretty much on the exact same level. It begs the question, right? Is Levi Wallace good enough to be CB2? Me personally, I believe that we could always go for an upgrade. And then of course we have to talk about Dane Jackson and was a late round pick in the 2020 NFL draft. And while he did end up having a couple of really cool splash plays when he got brought in, when we were absolutely dominating the opposing team, at the end of the day, there's still a lot there, right? There's still a lot of risk putting him in there and expecting him to go down there and be not necessarily a shutdown corner, but being a corner that can make it an impact almost immediately. There's a lot of rumors going around and the entire reason I made this video is just because I ended up seeing this report saying that the Buffalo Bills are interested in Steven Nelson. Steven Nelson was a cornerback out of Pittsburgh and very similar situation, I would say, in Pittsburgh and that occurred in Buffalo with John Brown. We love John Brown. We knew that he was an absolute stud of a talent, but we just couldn't afford him. It didn't make sense from a cap situation. And this is the exact same thing that happened with Steven Nelson, right? He wasn't the type of player where the Pittsburgh Steelers were going to go on ahead and pay him the amount of money that he was owed, and they ended up making him a cap casualty. This guy right here, in my opinion, would be an instant upgrade to this Buffalo Bill secondary. And But the question here is, will Brandon Bean pull the trigger on something like this? Will Nelson be able to come down on his asking price and join a team that's a contender? It's all going to pan out at the end of the day. And other cornerbacks available are, of course, Richard Sherman and Bashad Breland and Darquise Denard. All three of those cornerbacks would be an interesting fit. I do think that they would be an instant upgrade. Um, and I think that this should be something that we should be able to entertain. If not, I'm completely comfortable with Levi Wallace or Dane Jackson really taking the reins and being able to step up. Because like I said, Levi Wallace did end up making significant improvements going into the 2020 season compared to how he performed in the 2019 season. He's really starting to come into his own. So Dom Mafia, do me a favor. What do you think? Do you think CB2 is still a massive issue for us? Or do you think that we're all set, ready to go? Or do you think that we should try to make a move for some of those free agents that we just talked about? And Dom Mafia, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Report. I will see you tomorrow. And before I let you go, always remember, let's go Buffalo.